Now, as far as the opening, what's very beautiful about this, and I've probably pointed it out on some videos, is that he has a lot of sequences. And when you have sequences, you the sequence to whatever you're doing, whatever you play first and then you have a sequence to it, you have to respond to that. Um, what I mean is, and it's a harmonic response as well as a melodic response. What I mean to say is you start with the G major tonic here. The dominant, now he answers dominant to the tonic. So you, you need to respond to that. Um, if you play measures one, two, and three into four all the same, you haven't really responded to the sequence. Um, if you sang it and you just harmonized with the chord, you'd have answer. So I'd like to hear a little more of that um, in the playing at the very beginning when you're announcing the, the opener of the first four measures. Um, then you have, he has sequences again. So this is something I would respond to as well. I would think the first one is a little deeper into the keys and then the, the sequence up to that is a little bit less, not dramatically so, but enough to make the listener know that there's a relationship. And that relationship is make it slightly less. So now you're a little deeper in the keys on the answer. A little more and a little less. I don't make a big fuss on exaggerate. I don't exaggerate that FP. I do lean on it. Now here's where the beat has to stay with what you started with. You st One other thing, I know I'm kind of throwing a lot at you. Another thing is that left hand, and I think you do it pretty well, that rolling uh, Alberti bass that has to be uh, not any lumpy bumpies, but very smooth. And it will get a little deeper if you're playing the very first two measures a little deeper. The left hand will support that. And then when you're answering, you'll lift the left hand along with it. So after this, Keep this beat. Keep your beat. Keep it here in the scale. So what happened with your playing was this started to get slower than your opening beat. So take note of measure eight and nine as having to stay with the beat that you defined when you opened up the the movement. That, that's, that's very important. I would work a lot on measures 8 and 9. Stay with your tempo. This seemed to be in tempo, but stay. Make sure you taper, and I think you did, on your second beat there. Um, now it's the same thing. Here come the sequences again. Here comes an octave lower, what you said above, on high G you're saying on what would be treble G here. Less. I did make that less. Now you're back to your Alright, so the point here is the unifying beat. Unifying beat. And shape the scale nicely. Shape the scale. The scale has a little, actually a little crescendo. Even though it says forte, you don't start and you did this very well, by the way. I noticed that the scale that you um, you rolled into the scale as opposed to falling down on the first note of that D there, of the sol, sol latido, um, that was very good. And, okay, now this is a tricky little place. Um, what happened in this next section this, by the way, is all part of the so-called first theme. The second theme only comes when you're in the dominant of the key, right? You know that. Um, this was pretty good here, but what happened with the rests, they, they were a little too long. So you have da -de -da -de -da -de -da, rest, da -de -da -de -da -de -da, rest. Now what's hard about this is you have to shape, when it continues, you have to have a certain shape of what decide what you're doing. Could become very mechanical. 
So this this here, you got to make sure you're. You have do 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 rest. Do 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 rest. Now what most pianists do with it, I notice you just play the straight D. It says trill, and um, more often than not, that is played as what's called a turn, like this. That's usually what's done. If you choose not to do that, you can make sure that D doesn't hammer down too loud. I think it came down a little too loud on that second beat, when in fact, the first beat it gets the prominence here. The first beat gets yum less. Even though that you've built it up to a forte, you don't want to spring so hard into a second beat in any case, no matter whether your overall dynamic was forte, you still taper on a second beat like that. As far as shaping this, you really will have to shape as this is a continuous pileup of, of the motif of doodle doodle deedle dum, deedle 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 dum. Now you have long streams. Right, so you're gonna have to kind of do the kind of crescendo through this that doesn't um, get too punchy but you have little waves going through through this. And that's kind of hard to do. Um, what I mean by that is... What's really interesting is inside of this, you have little resolutions from dominant to tonic. And if I go slowly, you'll see, you th we think we're in C major for a moment here. to dip where you have and then it's and finally it's inside of that you have little dominant tonic resolution so you dip it a little and then you go back into the keys you can see what I did I that's why my wrist went a little forward. It, it, you have to shape it so that it, you, you shape down these little places where you hear the harmony going from dominant to tonic throughout this spill out of sixteenths. Now when we get to the second theme, which is in the dominant key, um, make sure your right hand, which is, which is in, in syncopation to the left, it's on the off beats, is make sure it flows horizontally. It's a scale, sol, fa, mi, re, do, up to that point. And you want it to just side down. You want the left hand, I would practice left hand just very, very smoothly first to make sure you're hearing these notes that are moving. very smooth and while that's laying that bed of smoothness in these little broken um, figures of eighths thirds fourths fifth sixth seventh octaves because you know these common tones here um, when you insert the the melody which is coming kind of on the offbeat you want that to be just as smooth as you play the left hand. Make sure you're going horizontally and not getting a kind of Rosie the Riveter up and down sound. So you want... Very smooth. Now you have the variation, and I would do a lot of, of what you just said. Um, I think this was pretty good, but remember to keep your beat. Now here you're going to need these rotations. I'll do it slowly. So you 
don't want to be a finger poker on this. You don't want to poke fingers out because it is. these are little groups of fours that are, have little waves. Again, the wavy feeling. The wavy feeling is one, two, three, four, roll a little, roll a little, little, little. Now you're in back tempo. And of course, the left hand against that will be... Now here it suddenly gets louder, um, but I would again roll it down. Roll it down. Everything's rolling motion. vocal model. Now here I notice you did um, kind of a, a tenuto or now uh, the recordings I've heard they did pretty much play them a bit sprightly. Um, I think you could get away with what you did uh, which was bum, bum, bum. that's Mozartian it is. Bum, bum. I'll go along with that. That's fine. That didn't bother me that much. I've heard pianists, some pianists go bum, bum, bum. Um, and some take it very literally and some do what you did and I don't object to that uh, but make sure you're keeping your beat we're slow tempo and uh, Now here, these are all in twos, but you might want to bring them down a little because they're sequenced. Here's where an answer. I think of the first two groups of two eighth pairs as being one idea and then responding in the next set of two pairs to what you just said. At least that's the way I feel it. And even if you don't get much softer, you have to some way say that it's a sequence. So sequence, let's say, that's how I do it. I'm going very slowly. And here again, dominant tonic. I have to respond to that because I don't, I don't know. Less but then get into the key. Um, so it works. This is a very hard play, so we go slowly. I always try to measure out kind of how many repercussions I have, although it's going to become kind of free, but it's a very short trill, and so you do have to know when it begins and when it ends. That, that was something I noticed. Um, so sometimes you have to try what it is fast to see how many repercussions you are capable of doing. Yeah, I do quite a little bit of extra ones because I'm going fast, but I would practice it first slowly. That's what I would do in terms of practicing it before you get into whatever tempo you're in right now. And you want to have boundaries for the trill. Um, so once you come out of the trill, and I'm playing it this very slowly now, and you have a counterpoint, of course. Overlapping. Now 
what you have to do here is um, these are beautiful suspensions, as you know. You have to you have to bring them down, even though it says starts piano. They're falling down, so ultimately you might want to go to an MP so that you can get create the sighing down effect because that's what's happening. <laughs> them down you have to bring them down and they also have to be very very liquid and smooth I think you pretty much did that I, I wasn't unimpressed with it I use your wrist I know I'm going in and out of tempos but I'm just trying to show you maybe how how the wrist works here Beautiful. You want to hear every line in that, every line. Um, and then your appoggiaturas. You have a lot of appoggiaturas in this. I mentioned that over here you had the appoggiatura. I go forward with my wrist on the second of, of the pair, on the second note of the pair of eighths, the second little third. I do go forward with my wrist, and that helps to shape it nice. So whenever you have these appoggiaturas, um, do it that way so that here you have a little bit forward, forward. Now this is a variation of this when you do this, right? And you know the harmony is six chord, five chord, four chord, three chord, two chord, one chord, and D major, because we've been in D major. So that's quite beautiful, just that sequence of progressions are, are gorgeous with suspensions even more gorgeous gorgeous like here resolve here resolve too beautiful listen really careful to those suspensions and little resolutions now when it comes to the variation you're still thinking in your mind of how did I do this so really rippling through that same thing with these extra little notes inserted in little steps um, but this time it's forte um, with variation and the variations with extra notes um, but still you want to roll through it and also respond to the idea of lean less lean less here's what I mean lean less lean less Because Mozart, you're always singing, like your voice would be having different shapes. What you do with your arm weight to get the forte, you'll do the same shape, but you'll use a little more arm weight. But you'll still lean less, lean less, but with deeper in the keys effect. And that will give you the forte. And I'm just kind of showing you how I um, roll the, into, deep into the keys for the first four notes on the variation. And then I lift the next four, and then I go deeper and lift and deeper and lift. So, so that, that makes it more like really beautiful Mozart. Um, over here on this cadence. Oh, this is another thing. Whenever you have these cadences, just now on that D, don't thump on them. Make sure they're tapered. I think many times you did taper. But once in a while, that you would hear a, um, an accent where your, where your phrase is resolving, which is right there. So you got to be careful about that. And then go. Make sure your left hand is really rippling. Yeah, no, no pokey fingers. Okay, now on this next page, um, I want to make sure you do the ornaments correctly. The ornaments are pretty quick. They're ta da, -da, 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 -da. ta da ta da 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 da
you make sure they're the way they should be executed. So that on the phrases. Um, now here, this is very playful, so we need a little bit, bit more of a playful. Okay, so um, we did this well. what you did here um, you have this transition you need to shape this better I think what happened is the beat changed here the beat did change as I'm hearing the beat that you had established on this page or throughout the piece was was somehow changing and we had some stretching that we didn't need just straight you might just play with coming back okay, so make sure that little solo which is a little transition that it stays within the realm of a steady beat that you've established now we're back to the um, same one and now we're going to a development a little bit of a development um, let's see to da 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 e um. rotation always helps um, and that you have to respond to that beautiful a minor modulation it's so beautiful to go from um, the, the G major statement to stating the, the little theme in a minor with the secondary dominant that is such a beautiful place so really feel the emotion of that uh, in your playing now it goes back to the major it goes into F major here <laughs> But if it's in keeping with all the other ornaments, it would be tia rest. Now don't forget, rest. Um, now we come back to the second theme, and technically speaking, this is the true recapitulation, I believe, because it's in the home key. Sometimes the recapitulation occurs with the second theme. Um, and you already know how to do this. This just sighs down, sigh it down. choose to do respond to the sequences bringing them down you don't have to you can keep it forte if you want all the way through the pairs of, of um, pagetores but I, I've always believed bring them down um, Two more, 
extra one if when you're going fast you'll squeeze in an extra one but I would try to measure it again like that for practice Three, two at the end. motion to show you the shapes of things. When you go into faster motion, you preserve everything you did in slow motion.